You are now listening to Feeding Off Each Other. This is a certified hey. Nicky Nick, Nick, V. Is that the soundboard or you? Wow. That was the soundboard. That wasn't me. <laughs> that was crazy. I'm excited. I have my soundboard back in play, and it's different from your guys's, so I'm excited to use, the, use these today. Mm. It's very exciting. <laughs> yeah, that sounds nice. <laughs> Dave, you don't have a laptop today. No. You're, are you not doing the soundboard? Okay, you're doing it off your phone. Great. Oh, cool. This one plays ads. <laughs> yeah, mine plays ads, too. I yeah. feel like I might... <clears throat> Uh, Sorry. If you hear unusual sounds, it's probably an ad playing through full you 60 seconds. Or, or a fart. <laughs> or a fart. Should I do the intro? No, you should not. Okay, do well, we have a guest <laughs> doing no. our intro today? Alonzo, can you cue up intro, the first intro I sent you? Welcome to Feeding Off Each Other, a weekly podcast where we feed off the talent, humor, knowledge, and awesome stories of our guests and each other. Well, wait, although that was <laughs> good. Our favorite person in the world, uh, Mr. Donald J. Thank you so much. Did you get that on Cameo? Did yeah. you buy that? How much did that cost? It was sixty nine dollars. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's not bad. But then I got um some other idiot to do it. So Alonzo, can you play number two? Mm. Welcome to Feeding Off Each Other, a weekly podcast where we feed off the talent, humor, knowledge, and awesome stories of our guests uh, and each other. No clue. That was no you. That was, that was me. <laughs> that was you. Okay, that was my first thought. <laughs> Wait, what? How Al- did you do that? Alonzo, play number three. How do you- AI be crazy these days. Welcome to Feeding Off Each Other, a weekly oh. podcast where we feed off the talent, humor, knowledge, and awesome stories of our guests and each other. What? That was like kind of Jason, but Jason had, uh, had a different personality. Who are you? That's yeah. insane. Yeah. Can, yeah. can we listen to mine once more? Yeah, you narcissist. Yeah. Welcome to Feeding Off Each Other, a weekly podcast where we feed off the talent, humor, knowledge, and awesome stories of our guests and each other. <laughs> I love the pause. That's the best part. When I hear someone else do the and intro, it sounds way more legit than when I do the intro. Yeah. Uh, do you guys think that sounds like me? Mm. Yes and no. Yeah, yes and no. It, I feel like the first two seconds sounds like me. Yeah, yeah. the early parts. The way it works is you take uh, any piece of audio, but it want, like, the AI wants like, more audio, so you try to give it as much as possible. And then you like, put in the text you want, and then you, there's all these like, different, there's two different sliders that are like, how accurate is it and how like clear will it show up and stuff like that. So then you just keep generating it until you get something that kind of sounds decent. And every time you generate it, even if you don't change the sliders, it comes out a little bit different. It's too easy. Yeah. It's too easy these days. Still took me like a half an hour though. Is our guest real or AI today? And how do we, how do we know? How can we tell? <laughs> it's hard to tell. I don't think, I, don't I think, think he's great... just a floating head yeah. right now. He's blue um, and blue. I, that's true. <laughs> Did we write an intro? Yeah. Course. He has an intro? Yeah. Should we Jason? Take no. it away. Oh, okay. Uh, well, everyone, welcome to episode 38 of Feeding Off Each Other. Today's guest is a filmmaker, on-screen personality, mountain biker, and all-around rad fella. He's plied his trade working in the camera department on such projects as Pink Bike Academy, Big Sky, Garage Sale Mysteries, and various Hallmark Christmas movies, <laughs> plus... <laughs> For nearly three years, was an integral member of both behind and in front of the camera for the uber popular YouTube network, Linus Tech Tips. Run on sentence there, Dave. Yep. We know him. <laughs> we love him. And you're going to love him too. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Van Berkel. Oh, Yay. 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 Hi. Smoke weed every day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> That was that was a great intro. Oh my god, I can't I, believe Garage Sale Mysteries is in that. I, I had to include it. That's a good it. one though. That's a that was like a seventeen episode series, I think. What is that? Oh my god, that was the first like film gig I got onto. Like uh, a friend of mine from college, Jerry Wang, he hit me up one day when I was really <laughs> slow. Jerry, Jerry Wang is the man. If you're in Vancouver, you know oh, Jerry Wang. He owns lie. all the gear. Why'd you laugh at that man? <laughs> that wasn't me. That was Jason. <laughs> Jerry, shouts out to Jerry Wang. Um, he, he, I was slow doing like freelance video work and Jerry hit me up. He's like, hey, do you want to start on a movie tomorrow for a month as a camera trainee? And I just said, yeah, sure. I have no job. And you're like, I'm just going to wang it. I'm just going to wang it. And I went out there. I wanged it. He's like a really awesome person to learn from. So yeah. he took me under his wing and showed me the ropes. I thought I knew stuff. And when you go on to a set like that, you definitely are not. I don't know. You don't know everything because there's a whole process that doesn't exist outside of that world. And yeah, so I started on this 
doing camera training on Garage Sale Mysteries, which was starring Lori Lachlan, who is now like, I don't know, banned from Canada because mm-hmm. she was in that college scandal. Shouts out to Lori Lachlan as well. Lachlan. She was really nice, a sweet person. She would. She even knew my name. Like I don't know if she just like <laughs> looked at the call sheet and then said it, but. That's still good. It was cool. Yeah, she was a really sweet person. She's still alive. She's not like dead or anything. She just got in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> also, she was Aunt Becky on Full House. Exactly, Aunt Becky from Full yeah. House, and like, yeah, super hot. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. She um, listens to the show, so she yeah, she does appreciate that behind bars. But I know she's a big fan. <laughs> yeah, she's each other. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's funny that that's on the the credits because that was actually like pretty pretty. Pivotal time. That's what, when I what just year got into film. I think uh, 2019, maybe 2018. Right, like so, like half a year ago. Yeah, <laughs> just a few months ago, basically a few dozen months. Hey Nick, you, you, so you saw Dave at a concert. You guys had a moment too. Mm-hmm. Where? Which, which concert? Yeah, he thought it was uh, seven years ago, but it was yeah. five years ago yeah. at the Bahamas concert at the Bahamas. Queen Elizabeth Theater. Checking them What's out. better than this? Guys yeah. being... Yeah, it was in a boot? No, no, no. I, that was a different... Uh, it was a different time. I didn't really remember the boot part of the story, but I do remember true. seeing... Okay. <laughs> it was a lie. It was fabricated. Do you remember the last concert we saw each other at? Blink-182. Oh, yeah. That's without right. Tom DeLong. Yeah. And now uh, they're that, coming yeah. back. Uh, yeah, I know. Are you going to go? I, April. I looked at some tickets. They were, like, pretty expensive. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, I'm still thinking of sending it. Without yeah. DeLong. Without DeLong, it's like seeing Blink-91, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it was still Blink-91. fun, though. It really was a good time. It was all the way out in Abbotsford at the whatever, not the Trade X, but the arena. The horse racing. Time. Ring. Yeah. No, not the, the only time I've been out that far for a concert. <laughs> not the yeah. horse racing rink, but the other one. <laughs> if, if Tom DeLong's there, they get to go to a better venue. Yeah. I think he has, like, the pass for, like, all the premier venues. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, you guys can actually come into GM Place now. <laughs> yeah without it they just they just hop us right over to abbotsford yeah it was still good though i think the crowd in abbotsford was the most fired up blink 182 crowd so i can imagine that like, it, it doesn't time. smell like shit in here it was great <laughs> it was great from what i can remember i don't know there was like another kind of like emo band opening for them but they had like quite the turnout for that as well it was a pretty good time um do you was, remember I, who it was I, I feel like no i have no idea mm. I feel like I should buy tickets. I mean, it's the last opportunity to see Blink-182. That's true. Why, are it? they dying? Uh, no. I mean, come on. Mark Let, almost did. You think they're, they're going to do Mark this it, again? Mark I don't know. Answer. I mean, definitely. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I had heard. they will have a residency in Vegas. <laughs> well, that would, that would be the death of them. <laughs> Just to Blink-182. Like, I would still watch them. You know you're so old when you're doing the annual Blink-182 trip. Oh, yeah. I've seen them 18 times. They're great. <laughs> they get better with it. Shania Twain's a, she's a, Residency at, in Vegas. See, wow. I, that's something I would go see. Well, Shania Twain. Why not Blink-182? I made the mistake recently of trying to uh, karaoke a Shania Twain song. And, like, she's got some range, especially. <laughs> and there's, like, so many, I don't know. You, you always remember, like, um, I don't know, the, the chorus, of course. And then mm-hmm. you realize there's, like, a thousand other lyrics that you've never paid attention to. And then you're up there just reading behind, just blowing it. Or you think you have like man, I feel like a woman. Yeah, that's one for for instance where the beginning is like pretty jam packed with some. Yeah, it's like dah, ba, dah, ba, dah, 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 dah. and you're like, I don't know. Yeah, who's been? You know, that's yeah. a good one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna start one. singing Go on. here. You should <laughs> no, sing, please. No. Um. Yeah, gotta love Shania. I went to her hometown once. That was like a job that I was doing for Cal Tire. I got to go to Timmins, Ontario, mm-hmm. which was like ten hours north of, or maybe even longer north of Toronto. And just like a tiny shit town, not shit, <laughs> just like a, just like a uh, off the beaten path town, a mining town. But there's a Shania Twain Hall of Fame thing there. So cool place. Yeah, great story. I went to the Country <laughs> Music Hall of Fame, and they had the outfit from um, what's the video that don't impress me much. Oh, nice. I don't yeah. remember the video. I don't the, like the leopard. The le- you remember? Oh, yeah. It's like a, oh, like a hood. Yeah. yeah, it was like on like a mannequin. Have you guys been hitting the Shania Twain documentaries? Because I have. No. There's more than one? Well, now there's a series on YouTube. Oh, my God. So I dived into episode one. Yeah, it was some, I think that was heavily about that music video. Okay. And how it changed things. I watched the one documentary on Netflix, but not a series. Yeah, I liked it. I think I watched it because I think it was you. You said it wasn't that good. The documentary? Yeah. It was fine. I liked it. 
I saw it from like a document, like the filmmaking of it. <laughs> are you are we are you testing foot sizes? <laughs> we're just te- we're just putting putting it, it out. I love Who's it. got the bigger foot? Oh, he does Dave. for sure. I got I more think- cushion though on these thick daddy. For Daddy four twenties cushion for the pushing. Yeah, just for the back. You know, Dave, what size your feet? Eleven. Okay, they're regular. That's like, yeah, it's regular. It's like yeah. a regular What's guy. Twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty one. Oh, gotta love that. How did we meet? Uh, okay, I actually was thinking about this on the drive over. I don't know when we actually first met. I think it was over a video call for like a bad lip reading for Red Bull Rampage. No, no. that was not when we met. That was no? years later, man. Was I after. swear that was it. But then no, that was years later. I think one of the first interactions I had with you guys, with, with you and Jason, was when I was going to BCIT, we were making like a student film and it was like pretty god awful. It was terrible. Like just a terrible script. No what thought put into hell it. Is that Jesus, is that Dave? <laughs> Was that me? Yeah, I think it was you. I don't have that. Sound. Sorry, turn his mic just, off. It was a blackboard sound. Oh, oh no, wait, one, wrong one. One, one more. No, who's yeah, there? Well, yeah. Oh, that's a good. Yeah, sound. that flows real. Sorry, nice. yeah. <clears throat> sorry guys. Yeah. Sorry. But yeah, we, I like. I think I reached out to you and Jason and was like, "Hey, I've seen you guys on YouTube. You're really funny. I'm making a student film. This is what it's about. It should be funny and gr- like great or something." And then <laughs> left on red. No, no, no. Jason responded and he was like, "Oh." <laughs> funny and whatever that sounds like something i can get under and then i like sent the script and you guys are probably like wow this is garbage and just never i don't think it ever turned into anything and it was it was pretty it was pretty shitty it was not a great not a great student film as most student films aren't uh, i don't yeah yeah I, I don't remember that i think we had one of those relationships where we were facebook friends for years before we actually met each other mm-hmm. before we met irl yeah that's kind of friend. Mm-hmm. yeah no, i forgot we did do that Bad lip reading. That mm. was fun. Yeah, it was, that, it was really challenging though. That was, that was good, so hard. That was a good one. I found that on my like old laptop recently and watched it again and thought that was great. Well, what was your involvement? Did you do something? I think I just did some writing. Like okay. basically, he wrote just some, the lines. Like, he wrote Dad ran bull rampage for us. <laughs> we, the, he was filmed. yeah. They were like, hey, can you go out there and ride all the lines? You're like on a bike, and no I was problem. like, yeah, no problem. This is easy. I don't know why there's a whole competition. But we need you to wear this. everybody's co- what they were wearing, like each athlete. So we had. A dozen costumes for him and yeah. he did their line individually yeah and then we just dubbed him because we didn't the athletes the real athletes they wouldn't release their their uh, their face to us <laughs> yeah yeah so it was a crazy trip i had to just write every line and then i had to write every bit of dialogue for whatever they were saying like oh no, that's totally not what happened <laughs> that's a complete fabric right, well, so which part of that was <laughs> the truth that? and there's no truth N- none, none of that was uh yeah you know you wrote for us we had we had like five people on it five or six people we, trying to write lines pull, pull it up and play yeah it maybe clip? That, that was a that was a fun misheard at rampage strong maybe mm-hmm. misheard at rampage misheard at rampage I'll, but I i'm gonna shout the out first thing we worked on yeah are we gonna no, be able to hear that was after well. how to be a canadian yes no i swear that was before <laughs> because i i yeah i swear that was like the first thing ever okay we'll find out <laughs> what does we'll it find say with the date what's the date time stamp it five years ago so like 2001 expand 2017 and and it's, it's, but this is on mahalo my dude you guys didn't even have that channel then i don't think no, well they relabeled it oh, okay yeah all right play anton bazette hey, you want to come be my buddy <laughs> yeah. yeah you want to go swimming <laughs> <laughs> some of them are good some of them suck yeah. big stuff at the bottom of this raging river somebody got torpedoed in the mouth bad for the smile <laughs> and the cheech, guys hey look a helicopter Ooh. <laughs> without beer would I be a small boy? That was my If line. a potato wearing plaid can protect its land with a purse, then we might actually win. This year, we've only got two sizes of French fries. That was so I right. had to put a plan together. Is in that the one yours, Nick? Sorry, boys. Mm, uh, I don't the Tyrannosaurus Rex <laughs> would. That sounds like Aggie. Uh, <laughs> it would save the world. I had to wiggle. <laughs> we had to cut a line. Rampage <laughs> and a foot massage. Can you give us your best family guy Check impression? Blur. I'm Stewie. Ah, <laughs> just like I think that was me too. Could I have some of that apple pie? Watch out for the bee. <laughs> Got it. High school chemistry? <laughs> it's freaking fantastic. <laughs> I lose my mind. Um, cheese whiz? We want scooters. <laughs> <laughs> Prediction. <laughs> Miracle whip? Yeah. <laughs> Respect old dudes. We're awesome. 
We're officially retired. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Boy, so that you was have no attention. Else. I applied officially to come what? up B. What are you doing? <laughs> oh man, that's Matt, crazy. This, this is all my voice. It looks eh? like yeah. it was a move on that squirrel. Did you slow that down? That, I think that was the line of mine. Oh. 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 Hey, what the heck really? is that? <laughs> Oh my god, they're really doing this? <laughs> that was just a oh, weird so interaction smart. already. <laughs> Whoa, look at those proportions! <laughs> that is so dumb. <laughs> look at those proportions. Whistling ain't for me. <laughs> oh, I put my tanton inside out again. <laughs> my mouth is on fire! <laughs> what do you think no, about works. winning and making our own wood shop? With our tools? Dirt was falling from my eyes. I grabbed onto my nostrils and just went. 12 rounds of Scrabble. <laughs> but I hate Scrabble, man. It's important you watch that about me. Oh Three my god, I bread that. sticks. <laughs> it's important oh, you I watch that about me. I got something in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> this one's pretty good. Yep, mm -hmm. that's a fungus. <laughs> hey, I, I don't want a photo. I, I just want to look at our reflection. Oh, okay. <laughs> the funniest yeah, ones are where you can't see their mouth. Mm, this is, um... No, Remy. This is not my flag. <laughs> Au revoir. When you're on a boat, you feel every single rock. And as you pointed out, I tried the wrong pants. Hey, yeah. Hey, Toy Story 2 is not just a movie about toys. And he only does jalapenos. Drink right? in hand. From the fish tacos. <laughs> I win. <laughs> I win. Stop it. He won. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, that wasn't fun. 2016. We had no fun making that. Oh, yes, Daddy. I was that stressed was making that. I was like so just good. watching yeah, clips man. so slowly with sound on and off. You know the craziest part? Red Bull actually paid <laughs> us to do that. That's that's we got some money to do that. Everybody got paid. Nice. That was what that a was nice a cool little project. job. And then that was like a little premonition because I got to go to Rampage the next year with Pink Bike. And film like mm. for 24 hours a day with Tippy. I was gonna say, so like a pretty chill gig, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty chill. Like, you know, get up at four, drive out to the site, shoot till sundown, couple more after sunset interviews, drive back at like 10 p.m., edit till like 3 a.m., back at four, baby. Yeah. Sleeping yeah. on the floor, no room for everyone to sleep. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta love that. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> there's this lingering oh, video. Just got now, <laughs> now, okay. Now there's. I just want to watch more videos okay. because the mm -hmm. momentum is going this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Play this next one. This life, is life changing moment. This must be the most viewed video of yourself. I think. So. What's the views at? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, two seventy. That's oh, yeah. it's not that much. But I mean, across all platforms. Yeah. Online. And every time it's appeared somewhere Everyone in the algorithm. This, play. <laughs> this is a legendary clip. This is a painful clip. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk us crash through it? Clip. Talk us through it. Talk yeah, us through yeah. it. All right. The audio only. Uh, Whistler. Can't remember what year. 2016. Went out. Big night in Whistler the night before. As you do when you're a young, silly man. And uh, first run in the morning. Nice little crank it up warm up beside each other mike my friend mike barrett who's got the camera on right now he's laughing like mickey mouse the whole way down uh yeah i don't know we we were planning on writing something else i re vaguely remembered we were gonna go write some tech or something slow and then we decided no let's go and crank it up and let's just like hoon down it going as crazy as we can Did you say you cranked it up oh definitely cranked it up and I don't know, just watching this Come just makes in. me so bummed because like I was in such a bad place to be riding. I was hungover, I was tired, yeah. I was probably still drunk from the night before. Nice. And like you just get so all this right there. confidence that you do not need. That's me passing there in the white gap shirt. Oh god, sorry. Oh! oh. Damn, nature. Okay, we're gonna need to see that crash again. Okay, my Slow finger mo. slipped, but oh, I think yeah. it actually kind of worked. Yeah. Up on the Whoa. front. Oh. Oh, so what's going through your head right there? Um, uh, a tree, I think. <laughs> I just, oh man, just came into the. That's the compression I was talking about yesterday. Is that Mike Brothers? 
No, my, his name's Mike Barrett. Oh. He's from Vernon. The, shouts out, Mike Barrett. Going to be doing, I just noticed I'm saying shouts out a lot, and I'm probably not going to stop. I'm going to be doing a lot of shouts out. Today. Shouts out to say. You can give out. as many shouts out okay. as you like. Sweet. Yeah. 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 Shouts out to everyone. Unlimited. Thank you. Right. No, individually is best. Yeah. That was a, uh, that was a uh, crazy moment. I feel like when I was like flying off the bike, I had like five full seconds to just like sit, think like, oh no, this is really bad had like a little life flashed before my eyes moment and then just like slammed so hard onto the ground. And the last little part, the last little part of that, my head like comes to a complete stop on that um, wooden ladder thing. And I think that's where I suffered the most like neck damage from that because it just, I'm rolling and then it's just like a hard stop. And then I was pretty fucked up. What was the, uh, what was the uh, injury report? I tore my ro- right rotator cuff. Uh, I got. <laughs> I, so, I, sorry, I, I thought that one was gonna say I'm a potato. I squished my potato. <laughs> um, uh, and I got a severe concussion. Oh shit! And then I, like, I was just running off of adrenaline for like a few minutes after this. My fingertips were like on fire. So were my toes, and I had like some damage to the discs in my neck, like C6, C7, but nothing that I went to the hospital before. For because as soon as, like, I'll rewind a little bit. Crash, felt, like, oh, surprised that I could walk. Got up, walked around a little bit. We decided, like, okay, we got to go to the hospital. This is a bad injury. We start going down the fire road. And my vision just kind of, like, like, just goes right into, like, a little small hole that I can't see anything else except, like, what's right in front of me. My friends kind of motorcade me down the road. And then as soon as we get, like, past the four seasons or whatever near the hospital my friend mike who was wearing the gopro is like oh my god i have a video of this like this was recording the whole time and this is like on a i can't remember hero session or something where you can't watch the playback Mm. so (laughs) screw the hospital we went straight back to our hotel room (laughs) plug it into the laptop check out the video we're like oh my god this is incredible so cool gonna be viral like drink beers, hang out, go get dinner, <laughs> and then just like do not treat any of the injuries that just happened. Probably went out, and then the next morning I woke up. I couldn't get out of bed, couldn't get into a car. Had to call in sick to work, call in broken to work, and then I got. I think worms. I went to the doctor like two days later, <laughs> and he he said you've been in what's like a car crash. No one has ever idiot. done that. No one has ever done that in the yeah. history of Dota. It's a. Oh my god! If anyone is listening to this and you crash, like go get treatment right away. Don't be an idiot. Don't yeah. go. Yeah. Get drunk and look at the clip. Like go treat it. That's a, a hard thing to do because sometimes you feel guilty, like you're gonna take up people's time at the hospital. Absolutely. If you have nothing wrong with you, mm-hmm. and it's a weird first run emotional. of the day too at Whistler, which is not like a cheap, you know, place to be just doing a lap. Yeah, it's really silly, but that changed a lot of my life. Actually, I changed like how I ride. How I approach riding, how I slower and handle myself. He just does it. Yeah, just like not being, I don't know, an idiot. Like not trying out to go prove something hungover on a trail that is inherently dangerous by speed, but not dangerous because it's a chill blue jump trail. But yeah, yeah, what a time. What a time that was. And then I like went straight back to my desk job editing, like hunched over like a shrimp for the next, like, I don't know how long. Not the way to treat an injury because my body just got so, like, I don't know, like, contorted. <laughs> yeah. Like, just, not, I don't know. I think my posture has suffered from that. I don't know. Probably a lot of things my posture has suffered from. But that was a big injury. And that was uh, a bummer. But it was, I got a free Evoc backpack from that. Oh. Winning, like, all oh, of the worth year. It. So, totally yeah. worth it. No way. Yeah. <laughs> Still use it to this day. Bazinga. We just gave you an Evoc backpack. Too. I know. And I was going to say, two of my favorite bags are those two free Evoc bags. They're great. Great quality. Shouts Amazing. out to Evoc. Yeah. Shouts out. Never paid for your Shout products, out. but I've used them. And I just used that bag recently. It's awesome. It's the one bag on my trip that I didn't get, uh, or that I did get, that did make it home. My other bag did not. Really sad. Yeah. Can I throw a non shout out? <laughs> yeah. No shouts out to Flair Airlines. <laughs> Shout down. Shout well, down. Roast it. I want that bag back. How did you lose it? Direct. <laughs> Direct flight. Yeah. <laughs> Where did it go? 
That's part of the flair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, wear you your, might lose your bag. Wear your pieces of flair. Yeah. Literally wear them, because if you don't, they're not coming out. Was right. that an office space reference? Yeah, yeah. Same. Shenanigans. Isn't that, no, isn't that di- waiting? Or is it office space? It's office space. It's office space, but they both work in like similar, similar style restaurants. Applebee's-esque yeah. establishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No good good movies, shit. both of them. Watch them. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds is in The First Waiting. Deep yes. cut Ryan Reynolds movie. He looks- Did your potato just fall out? What was that? Yeah, I don't know. Who gives a shit? <laughs> shout out me. That's what I'm talking shout about. Out, <laughs> shout out to potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Shouts out to potatoes. They're a great staple in the American diet. You got mashed. You got french fries. You got <laughs> scallop. Scallop for the seafood lovers. <laughs> I don't think that's what that means. <laughs> You got shrimp, you got octopied. <laughs> I've never had a shrimped potato, but I've seen one. Well, you've been shrimped at your desk, though. Yeah, that's true. Which I'm not sure. I've never heard that reference. No, it's like, you know how a shrimp yeah, I get is, it. right? With the little T-Rex yeah. kind of form. Do we know what a shrimp is? A uh, shrimp is just like a, no, uh, you know, a crustacean from the ocean. They're mm-hmm. pretty tasty. Mm-hmm. They're, uh, they catch a lot of them in Mazatlan, Mexico. If you're Jewish? No, no hey, good, can, can we look up... Uh, Oh, gigantic really? yeah. squid yeah. footage. Or, this uh, is like a recent thing in the last week or so. <clears throat> Sorry, what now? Gigantic news? squid. Doing news sure. now? My yeah. brother sent me this. Uh, They've been around for a while, actually. Underwater <laughs> footage. It, you got to look at like n- n- recent news or something. I don't know what they're called. You have a brother? I have a brother, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, no, he just means his black friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my brother sent me this. <laughs> he loves squid. It's big What's squid guy. Guys being dudes. Oh, squids are pretty terrifying. Um, I don't know if you guys want to hear a fun fact? What are you searching? What was your fun fact of the day? This isn't it. official, but um, sharks are older than trees. Well, what trees? What do you mean? Just yeah. trees in general. Oh, like as a species yeah. on this planet. Yeah. Isn't That's that, pretty Doesn't that fuck you up, kind of? Yeah. <laughs> kind of. How is that? When the oh, world but... was just ocean? Yeah. There was no land? It, 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 sort of, yeah. If... If, the, if there was a period. Pangea? Yeah. Uh, how did, how did, go? Yeah, was it, did you just Pangea? Google YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Yes. <laughs> hey, I'm yes. guilty. I'll do that every now and then, too. What? Go to text somebody on Google search? <laughs> it's not Vancouver. It wasn't Vancouver. No. Oh, that's terrifying. No, I don't know. That's pretty neat. Oh, man. So, wait, what are we looking at here? We're, this is squid. Nick after he crashed on Crank. Yeah. <laughs> Getting lifted There's out of the a, water. <laughs> this is him working at his desk. Yeah. There's a giant octopi. <laughs> is this a squid or an octopus? Uh, it's got, it I looks like, we see at least squid. four legs on there. Wait, does a squid have less legs? I don't know. I think they, have a, I think they both have eight. We're discovering how little eight. I know about the ocean. Yeah, squids all have AIDS. Mm. That's unfortunate for all of them. Yeah, but it's good for them. Disease. It okay, like makes them better. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. All right. It, you got to look up Magna Pinna squid attack. Magna Pinna. New ROV footage. Deep sea oddity. Do you guys like octopus? Do you like eating that type of food? I love bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm n- hey, nervous. Today, Junior. It's a weird one. It can be good. It's good, but they're so smart. It kind of feels like a shame. True. Like eating elephant. Yeah, that's true. I wonder what elephant tastes like. There you go. Okay. All right, what so is, you, like it's kind of game. a confusing video, but uh, you can, you don't really see the scale of how huge this. I don't think they have squid scales is. at all. <laughs> <laughs> Ocean joke. <laughs> and this thing is massive, and I think the like Alonzo I think the reason the that this, <laughs> the same Whoa. Thing. Whoa, is, are those its legs? Long yeah. legs? That's creepy. Why is this, this music? Is, <laughs> wait, this is an old one. This is 2007. Was this filmed on those cameras under the TV? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. I this, am terrified the, of the open You ocean. gotta look at the recent one, though. Because, okay, so the thing is, they've captured footage of these gigantic squid, but they're mm-hmm. usually just passive, and they're just kind of floating around, and they thought that these tentacles <clears throat> just flowed behind them. But this recent video, it appears that this squid is using them to attack and it attacks mm. the ship and you see these things like in an instant whip oh. towards their um do you like also see submarine them, do you also oh. see them nene good reason to they never they can nene really well never oh, go to the, the yeah. gulf of mexico there's nothing good for you in there <laughs>
Yeah, I don't know why they attached the set or the the spooky music because it was spooky. Yeah, I guess so. That's just what it sounds like down there. <laughs> yeah. Skeletons and shivers down your spine. Ooh. Wow, the quality is unreal. The <laughs> cheese <laughs> tax. The it, cheese. It's got like tax. a uh, Batman looking top, and then yeah. just a so pretty, why, scary root. Why are they so dangly? Pretty sure this thing is like a few stories tall. Mm. Jesus. Like I don't know. You might need to Google that. I don't you need like to confirm, this. but I don't want to go in the ocean again. I have fear of the ocean. Do you? It's all justified now. Yeah, <laughs> you should really latch onto one of that. these. Like, uh, I was talking to some people recently. They're like, "Oh, do you? Okay. Are you into diving?" And I just thought, "No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't <laughs> ever want to be." <laughs> and I just thought, "No, <laughs> there's nothing good for me down there." You Damn, didn't say anything. You scared? There you go. I'll so wait, are we expecting an yeah, attack? Top. Yeah, something's gonna happen here. It's gonna <laughs> cut. Right, yeah, eventually, this is good podcasting. Good podcasting. Yeah, podcasting. great podcasting. <laughs> We're watching a fucking screensaver right now. <laughs> it's like, hey, can you put on the one where the thing bounces 95? around the screen? Where we're yeah. blasting the pipes. Space. I want the flower. Remember the flower that would like transform and turn into a box, and it was like. I just remember the one that had like. Green and yellow, purple pipes just like constantly. Oh, piping yeah, 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 yeah. Windows 95. And you could like change the configuration and speeds and stuff. I didn't get too custom with it, I don't think. I didn't have that depth on my version. It's All right, here you go. Here you go. Okay, it's happening, wait. okay? Those, the tentacles. This reminds me the of whipping nope. is starting. Does it remind you of God. Nope, guys? Oh, I don't like this. oh, yeah, this is Nope for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it, it kind of is like Nope. Yeah. Do you have a spot on? And then it just uh, if it swims away. That's it. Oh, that was it. That was oh. it. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, that was. Ain't it. nobody got time for that. Yeah, that's <sighs> that's. Scary. That was kind of my reaction. Oh, Alonzo, can you time. delete? Yeah. <laughs> can you delete this whole podcast? <laughs> <laughs> can we restart? We'll just start from hold on, scratch. Hold on. Yeah, let's. Wait, do we want to play this? Can this is Nick's pop or that from a toony. Oh wow! I I don't just know if I've ever watched this. Just back to back. Yeah, yeah. Play it. Just a video. It's here. This is a great vlog before Mahalo My Dude channel was Mahalo My Dude. Oh my god. Do you need to, do you need to Google Good YouTube Lord. again? Good Lord. You stupid. <laughs> god, I hurt a little, but I'm all right. All right. Uh... I wanted to steer this in another direction. Okay, we yeah. can steer. We can I mean, steer. I'm yeah. looking forward Let's to pivot. watching this video. Should we pivot? We can pivot. You have it? Pivot. Okay, oh, okay well, no. Ooh, look at that. Now it's playing. Now Ooh. there's no reason to pivot. <laughs> okay, so this is a vlog from <laughs> well, when we filmed like How to Be a Canadian. <laughs> yeah. Starring, co-starring, <laughs> Nikki V. Look after them cows out there. Wait, you came in and saw them. Will you forever be my tuning queen? <laughs> if you don't continue. Yes! A million times, oh. yes! I can't tell you, I've been stressed out about that all week. <laughs> Ever since I met you about 25 minutes ago. <laughs> I can't tell you, I've been stressed out about that all week. I knew I was going to get married that week, I just didn't know who. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. All right, that's all we need. Oh, oh wow. wow. Oh, my is this, God. So the title is Can We Pop the Middle from a Toonie? Is this a, uh, is this a public video? Mm -hmm. You still watch it's this on my home. It has there. nothing to do with you bikes. You go watch it. Nope. Isn't it illegal? I'm still a piece of garbage. To pop a middle? Illegal? middle? Wasn't that one of the lines? Like, yeah. isn't it illegal? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. And then the to face currency? The cops yeah. show up, but we didn't have the budget to actually have no cops, cops appear, so we just had the sound effect. Like, Woo! Yeah. That's all you need. That's all we need. That's all you really need. Oh yeah, okay. I wanted to ask, where did the name Nikki V come from? Why do people know you as Nikki V? I don't even think I know, but every time we've done a video with you or post something with you, people comment Nikki V. Yeah. Nikki v. So when I was working at Linus Media Group, um, there was a channel, Channel Super Fun, that was kind of just at that time, just for like random ideas and stuff. Like it wasn't to make a profit or like to even have any type of purpose. It was just like we're if it couldn't end up on the other channels. Maybe we just put a silly video on there. <sighs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> and then, uh, so I was, I think when I started there, I just kind of latched onto that channel. I was like, oh, this is fun. This is my alley. So I'd be editing from the other channels, Linus Tech Tips and Fast as Possible. And then once in a while, I'd get to do a video on channels super fun. 
And uh, I don't even know how, but I just started goofing around and like having all these like <laughs> alter ego Italian influenced <laughs> characters, I guess, and just yeah. started goofing around with that. I think I was watching lots of like um, listening to lots of like Action Bronson and Big Body Bess, his like hype man. And that guy just has so many one liners that are so funny. He's not Italian, but he's just like a New Yorker. And I just like, I have something where like when I hear some accent or somebody who has a funny voice, I just think in my head in that accent all the time, all the time, like to an annoying amount. So if somebody's Australian and they're speaking in some lingo, I'm just the rest of the day I'm thinking in their accent. But anyways, I was listening to a lot of these New Yorker guys and I guess I just started uh, doing some New York kind of stuff. And then I was referring to myself as Nikki V. Mm. Yeah, there's a there's a one where we like paint a car. I think yeah, that's where okay, it started. Yeah, I remember that. That one's mm-hmm. coming to mind. Somebody actually made like, some fan videos like um like one if I'm in the Illuminati, there's like a great fan video, Nikki V Illuminati. And then there's another one where somebody just made a compilation of all those pieces. So thanks for whoever did that. Feeling Nikki the love. V custom. That's it. Seven that's, years ago. One mil. That's the first one. Pimp My Civic was the first one, I think. Pimp My Civic some, there's a great opener in Pimp My Civic some more. Oh. That's worth watching the very first clip. All right. You selected the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> you had <laughs> this oh, you no, had yeah. one job. No, no, you got it, you got it. Oh, that, okay. That is it. That's the one. That's, you got it. Wait. It looked like you were clicking the wrong one. Hey, what's up, folks? It's Nikki V, your mother's favorite house guest. We're here back again on Channel Super Fun with something a little bit different this week. I know right. we painted this thing beautiful pink, and, you know, it looks pretty good, but I was thinking, you know, this thing could be spiced up a little bit with some sick features. You know what I'm talking about? Linus doesn't actually know about this. I told him I was born this because my car was in the shop. But uh, we're going to be doing a little custom mods to it just to make sure, you know, it looks extremely balling when we're on the streets. So why don't you follow me? I'm going to give you a couple tips to paint in your car. Here's your first tip. There's a shuttlecock on the mirror. Yeah, cans and all these that's a Linus Easter egg. Like He's a big uh, come out of the way badminton little player. Brother. Get him to deal with this Loves stuff. We don't need this in our garage over don't here. Don't you love it's watching nonsense, videos man. of yourself? Hey, it's just doing, so guys? cringy. Get out like, of my I way. I can't even hear my own voice or see my own face. Ugh. First things first, we gotta talk about good. wardrobe, all right? It's a big part of painting. People say, oh, wear your crappy clothes or do something like that. I say that's nonsense. Get a white shirt because white doesn't show any <laughs> Fireball. You get on it. Sure. You gotta get some good footwear. Oh, ultimate. You don't I wonder what that Urban wreck. Junk. You gotta it's get from the a dog. custom oh, yeah. shoes Dodge done ball. up with the vents. You gotta get those custom jeans cut around that tooth because you don't want to be blocking that flap. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna be providing all the airflow you need for your body to just keep cool. Not this cool, but pretty cool, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk in I'm gonna that get you to be doing accent the for the rest of the podcast? You're doing this no, today. I don't think I can. No, I've no, retired no, it. I've retired this whole persona, I think. Body. I don't know if I could go back. I don't know why I'm doing this. There's Dennis. Just, Big shout out to Dennis I'm Liao. He's me. still working at Linus Media Group. Okay. Still uh, there. Yeah, he's editing. Here. He's producing some stuff. I think he's writing now. Less editing. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, screw this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's taking too much airtime. Seven minutes long. Yeah, it's not even your channel. Well, okay, fine. Let's watch a few more minutes. <laughs> no, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, no. good times, though. That's when I had, like, a real free reign to just goof around and make stuff. I really enjoyed that time. It was really fun. Dennis was my, like, uh, co-partner in making them funny stuff. He was my roommate at the time, too. Shouts out, Dennis. So what was it like working there? Like, uh, what what it did it, you do? You edited yeah, when I first started that, well, I was working at Cal Tire before, right out of school. And then uh, uh, some guys that I went to BCIT with, Ed and Brandon, I think it was Brandon uh, Lee that reached out. He's like, hey, uh, I have a job for you. If you want to come move back to Vancouver, um, I'm working at that YouTube channel and it's taking off. Like, you should come try it out if you're feeling like switching up your job, which I was. So I moved back, started there. Just making, yeah, like basically editing mostly and then shooting some stuff as well. And then, yeah, it all transpired from there. <laughs> really, really in-depth. What, what number employee were you? Okay, so. He's counting on his fingers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I was like employee number six or seven. Okay, so pretty But I could off. be wrong because I might be missing someone, but I think like employee number six, I want to say. I think that counts as the ground floor. Yeah, we, were, we were working out of a house by then, so it was like pretty startup style, like no shoes in the house. And it wasn't like some, it wasn't like a house that somebody was also, well, one of the guys was living in the basement, Luke, but uh, it was just like a townhouse for working on stuff. Mm. So it was a fun time. We had like shit everywhere, just like computer parts everywhere. It was so dirty. Like it was a fun time. That was a really fond memory. Um, 
And then as things like got more streamlined and like legit, got to goof around a little bit less, then it kind of changed for me where I was editing a lot more. We were in a um, like an actual like sound stage, had like a editing suite in there, no windows to the outside, really just started to like turn into a job that I didn't want to do. You know, it, the time had passed where the fun part was over and then it was just like a job that I was showing up to. So at that point, I just decided I got to switch it up. Can't stay stagnant somewhere. How long did you work there? Mm, I don't know. I'm going to say I always have to like look back at my Instagram and like scroll to see like what what era of life. That your, was. your LinkedIn said nearly three years. OK, yeah, probably about that. <laughs> nearly three know years. More about you. Oh, wow. LinkedIn. Yeah. I haven't checked that in a while. Um, I, I checked it. Yeah. Are people still connecting on there? Oh, yeah. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> the DMs are crazy. Oh, man. It's wild. <laughs> Just dick pic. Dick They're unmoderated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People don't know that, but it's the least moderated yeah. chat out there. It's crazy. Yeah. So probably about three years. It was a good time. The my one of the projects that I was the most stressed out on and like I think I bit off more than I could chew was this project called Nerd Sports. That was like near the end of my time there. But I'm now looking back, super proud of that. It was a really fun project. Like we made basically a show where all the guys from the office, like the nerds. Uh, versus like pro athletes in their sport and we would handicap the pro athletes until it became a fair game and it was it resulted in some pretty fun times the ver- the very first episode is like the guys from the office playing like the whatever trinity western girls volleyball team and each of these girls are like six foot eight and could like squish you like a bug and it was just like so funny to see like w- at what point the game became fair like they had to have blindfolds on and like their hands tied behind their back or something like that sounds actually a little crazy uh they had like oven mitts on <laughs> and some other stuff they had to be topless yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah no, ball it, it didn't yeah. it didn't go there but uh i'm sure linus <laughs> i'm sure linus would put himself in some hot water with a suggestion like that um <laughs> what did he say i don't know <laughs> they weren't uh, allowed to harness the power of god that was one of the no handicaps. no that was one of the handicaps do yeah. not no prayers no prayers <laughs> absolutely no, no crosses you no know, take them off no yeah it was a good time um that was a fun series and looking back i was really stressed and like the editing of that i just hated because it was a lot of work i think in some episodes there was like like nine cameras to cut from Oof. Oof. like a live <laughs> broadcast like yeah. an in-house broadcast as well as all the stuff that we shot all the interviews like all the live camera oh man it was a big big undertaking but uh at the time I remember being like so bummed because this project I think was supposed to be bought by this like YouTube competitor at the time. And we had even had a meeting about it and I think we pitched it to them and they were happy they were going to buy it. And then it didn't end up happening. Like they didn't end up purchasing it. I don't think. So it just went on the channel. I was like, Oh, well we'll just release it. And then at first I don't think it did super well, but then now those videos have like a ton of views. So I think in the end it was a success, but it just goes to show like, I don't know when you make something and you're truly passionate about it and it feels like you're making something good and you put it out there and it doesn't get the response. Like you almost just have to like take yourself away from that and just go on to the next thing and just keep focused because then you never know when something will be like a success later down the road or like maybe it never will be, but getting hung up on it and like waiting for it to do well is like such a crappy kind of position to be in. Cause you're just going to set yourself up to be bummed out. Yeah. Unless it's like a killer video and then you're like, woo, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. I feel better about something that I think is really good that doesn't quite, you know, get the views versus something that I didn't think was that great that does pretty well. Yeah. I like, think that's like the way to make stuff. You know, if you're coming from a place of like, I don't know, your intent is to just make something that you think is awesome and you put that out there, that's a success. But if you're starting to like, okay, well, what does the audience want? And like, what does the algorithm favor? And all of these little factors. Like, I think that's why content in general on YouTube has just kind of declined because it's not the golden era of like um, making stuff genuine and funny, putting it out there and then it just blowing up. Now it's like an industry where there's like actual things to follow and guidelines and whatever algorithms to, to tend to or to tailor your content to. So, yeah, having a good intent, that's always a good, good start for a great video, I think. Making something for your friends that will make them laugh. And then hopefully you have lots of people out there that are 
gonna laugh at the same stuff. I feel like um Tay's on day with this mic. Every time I <laughs> every time I have to breathe, Shopping I have to go. <clears throat> I look away from the mic <laughs> so I can breathe. <laughs> Why aren't you just breathing <laughs> naturally? I can hear myself breathing through the mic. You're, You're auto breathing the whole time. <laughs> I've been breathing manually this entire time since sitting. Oh down. no, sure, you said crazy. it. Now I am too. These nuts. I used to be scared if I thought about breathing as a kid and then stopped thinking about it that I would stop breathing. That's like some edible territory where you're like, oh god, yeah. Dave was heavy on the edibles. As a kid. <laughs> oh I, yeah, you're a big I was ahead of the curve. Kid. Like 1997 in the back of a, you know, car- Grand Caravan. Yeah. Stressing out on the edibles. <laughs> if I don't inhale and then exhale, I'll die. Mom, can you look at my hands? Are they huge? <laughs> Does he look like a bitch? <laughs> she, she said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Oh, man. Yeah, good times there. to breathing now. <laughs> <laughs> Did, do you stay in touch with anyone there? Still? Yeah, uh, Dennis, I... Uh, definitely stay in touch with I haven't talked to a lot of the guys in a while but um, they're great like they're out there doing their thing killing it they're making money they're like doing what they enjoy that was one of the things too like I was never a big PC like computer head before joining there so I learned a lot while working there but um, by the end like it wasn't like my thing that's like you know for something like biking or whatever snowboarding or goofing around those things I would just do whether I was being paid to do them or not. So for a lot of the guys that work there, like they're so interested in computers and technology. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter what the, the job is. If you're around that all the time, that's amazing. That's awesome. So yeah, they're, they're killing it. And like my friend Dennis, damn, he's doing really well. Like every time I like uh, look back, I'm like, God damn it. Like that was the worst financial decision ever leaving that job, <laughs> with like benefits and a salary and, all of that stuff. But also like that type of work for me is not the thing. Like being a salaried employee, working like nine to five or whatever, probably later than that. Um, I just don't like that repetitiveness or routine. I'm a bit of a kooky, kooky guy, goofy goober. I need to have a crazy sporadic s- schedule to keep me interested and stuff, which is why I feel like now working in film industry as crazy and sporadic as it is been really nice because i'm meeting people every day and going somewhere different almost every day the variety has been like a way more suiting job for me than an office job which i just start to like show up every day and get a little crankier and just start like getting grumpy with people i I don't know when you're in that spot it's like why would you spend your life being cranky at something you don't want to do just get the heck out of there (laughs) do something else yeah Don't stay in a shitty situation, no matter what it is. If you're unhappy in some situation, switch it up. You know, Mm -hmm. variety is the spice of life. Get out of there. What are some other quotes? Some other niche or sorry, cliche quotes. Um, Every boy and every girl spice up your life. (laughs) That's it. Yeah. What? Spice Spice Girls. Girls. Oh. (laughs) No, 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 no. No, that's a different song. No, no, you're right. Okay. Good, good tune. Spice Girls. Like slam it to the left if you're having a Mm. good time. (laughs) Stick it to the right. Yeah. So what do you do now? So, oh, well, as of uh, the last like four months, there's pretty much been no work. So I've been a professional vacationer almost. But uh, what my job title now in film is uh, first AC, so focus puller. I'm like a camera technician. So build the cinema camera up at the prep, make sure it's going to last for the, the show, the run of the show. And, and they then, actually fixed our setup here before the, we started rolling on the podcast. <laughs> that actually that he made was me feel good. Yeah. Messing with our cables, we had plugging no stuff in. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, that's it's what we just did. There is what I usually will do at work, like just troubleshooting problems. And if I can't fix it, then call up the rental house and send the gear back to them, or figure out some way to make it work. But yeah, um, that's a really fun job. Like I like playing with cameras, and I like like the actual focus pulling part of the job is really fun. It's literally a video game. There's a lot of pressure involved too. Like sometimes you only, if it's a stunt or something, you only get one take. All of that little practice from shooting biking or like comedy kind of stuff. Like you only really get the gold one time. You don't get to just redo it 20 times. So that part has helped in that. Um, I don't, I don't get too overwhelmed with the pressure, but I definitely do get overwhelmed sometimes. <laughs> like if you do a rehearsal or something, and uh, you're pulling focus, which for those people who don't know, just like focusing a camera manually, you're literally just shifting where the 
the sharp part is in the shot. And on a movie or something, you're shooting with a really like fast lens, wide open aperture. There's only like a millimeter of space to work with what's going to be sharp. So you're doing your little dial wirelessly from... I'm not explaining this well. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Just remember to breathe. Yeah, I know. I can't breathe. I'm getting so nervous. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you're wirelessly controlling a motor on the camera, which is turning the focus, and you're shifting where it is. So you do a rehearsal. You, like, nail it. Sweet. The, the actual actors come in. They do some completely different shit. Hopefully you're quick on the draw. And you're, <laughs> you adjust to what they're doing. But then the, the scariest part is when you, like, do a rehearsal, and you completely blow it. and then they're like okay first team which is like the actual actors they come in and then you're like oh god like i don't know if i'm gonna get this at all but just like anything um the best way to do it is just to be like i find like the first one is always the best one like i don't even want to see the rehearsal because i just don't want to like have any like okay they're gonna end up there and move here and whatever like you can set marks there's mark there's always marks on the ground for lighting like where the actor will come in from or where they'll end up and uh you can like set marks on your wheel. Okay. That they're coming in from like 27 feet and then they're ending up at like seven feet, six inches. That's where they're going to be. So you can set a little mark on your wheel, which is like accurate to the mark on your lens that you prepped. And, uh, well, we're getting real technical here. I just want to ask if you've (laughs) fucked up so bad that you got fired. Uh, I don't see. That's the thing. I don't know because usually if you fuck up bad, it's not that you'd get fired. You just wouldn't get a call back. Mm. But I, I feel like I generally have a good, um, I don't know, whenever I do uh, like one day on something, I try and make sure that I'm like hopefully killing it because that's usually your interview for your next job or whatever. So I don't know. I don't, I've never been fired off set. I've probably been not called back or something. I have to have been. Have you seen anybody get fired on set? Uh, yeah, I definitely have. And it's funny sometimes <laughs> because like it's a place where temperatures run hot and like people are get really frustrated. But then the whole key to that industry is like, don't get worked up. There's no point. Like you don't even have to rush ever. You just do what you know how to do. Carry on. You, you never get fired for like doing that, but you can see people get flustered and then freak out at the wrong person, like yell at the director or something. And then it's just like, you don't see them after lunch. They're gone. Oh man. I once saw um, a sound guy, like, lose his shit. For fair, like, fair. Somebody was, like, tugging on his uh, cables that were coming out of his mixer. <laughs> like, his video feed. <laughs> Somebody was tugging on his cable behind the tent. And uh, it was the director. He had the two screen monitors, but they were hardwired into the sound guy's mixer for his video feed. And the director was, like, trying to get closer to set. And so he just starts walking with the, the monitors. And the cables are still plugged in. And then so the cables at the other end on the sound mixer side, they're getting like tugged out of his uh, whatever mixer. And like that, whenever that's happening, you're like, what the fuck? Who's doing that? So he runs out of the tent. And he's like, what the fuck? Like who is pulling on these cables? And it's the director. And the director's like, who are you to yell at me? And then they had <laughs> oh, this whole kerfuffle. And then the next day there was a new sound crew. <laughs> oh, I'll wow. tug whatever cables I want. Yeah, pretty much. But it's unfortunate because sometimes the directors can cross the line of like person, like, I don't mm-hmm. know, professional, personal space and stuff like that. They're the director. But then, you know, you're like, oh, that's my gear. Don't touch it, please. Watch out for this guy <laughs> over here. Yeah. Yeah. So, seen, seen that. But I don't know. As far as some other firings, there's some people who should have been fired for sure. There's a, yeah, wow, there's so much stuff going on. It's an exciting job. Do you exciting ever work place. on Batwoman? Yes, yeah. Season one, good times. I heard it was a bit of a that shit show. Well. Yeah, it was. Um, not to throw Ruby Rose under the bus, but I think a lot of people <laughs> said she was like pretty hard to work with at the time. I think she caused a lot of delays for stuff. Not like she's going to be watching this and not that I don't care. Either. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She could be a <laughs> other. We don't know. Yeah. Um, that was a cool, that was like my first uh, cool like union job though i had just been like a permittee in the union and it was really busy that summer when the first tour season was being filmed and i got a chance to like come on as like c camera first ac or something like that and then fill in for a friend uh like a friend of mine and yeah it was a it was a really cool opportunity because there was actually a huge budget for each episode like millions of dollars for each episode stunts fighting choreography like there's like a ton of cool stuff and then when that episodes air you're like oh this is 
<laughs> like the filming of it is so much cooler. Yeah. Like, I don't know. There's people that are into those types of shows, but I personally think the a lot of the superhero stuff we make is just like a little bit boring. And But then if you were to see the behind the scenes, you're like, wow, that is dope. Like, what movie is that? And then they'll use like a split second of each little crash and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of that stuff's like fairly disposable feeling mm -hmm. when you watch it. Yeah, and it's crazy that they spend some... I think there's some restructuring going on. I don't know that all these shows are going to be getting the same budget and being the same series. Like, I think there's a whole shift in, uh, like, CW content, maybe, or Warner Brothers or whoever owns them. But, uh, yeah, man, that was cool. Like, that was the one of the first stunts I got to do. And I show up to work, and uh, the DP, this guy, Mark Burlett, he was, like, the DP of um, Cabin in the Woods or Gaffer or something. He's like, hey, we're doing the stunt tonight. I'm going to put you in the Russian arm, which is the crane truck. We're only probably going to get one take of it. So you're good? And I'm like pretty green. Like I'd just done a bunch of Hallmark movies, but never something like that. And I'm like, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> and then I'm just like shitting my pants for the next nine hours of all this preparation for the stunt. My wireless for my fizz, like my wireless motor on the lens was like, cutting in and out because we were under Canada place, like in that tunnel. Oh, nice. Mm. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. There's like this, um, <laughs> the first shot was this little motorcycle stunt where it's following this Brinks truck. And that was like on the Russian arm as well. That was like a little warm up. It was an easier shot. And then we went straight into the stunt, which was the Russian arm driving away from this Brinks truck, which is coming towards us. And then it hits a barrier flips and goes upside down and like blows up. And, Right, like 20 seconds before this thing is going, or we're about to roll, like my MDR, which is the little like part on the camera that controls my motors, it's like cutting in and out and cutting in and out, and I'm changing channels, and like everything is interfering with it. You've got like, yeah, there it is on the left. Uh, it was actually with Peacemaker Filmworks. Shout out to those guys. You guys have worked with them before. They're a super cool specialty camera unit. That was, um, that was the first time I got to work with somebody. Um, we were just kind of shooting the shit. I was like, oh, yeah, I think I had some sort of mountain bike shirt on. And then he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know, like, I know mountain biking. Yeah, I made some mountain bike films. Uh, you ever heard of, like, New World Disorder? No. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely have. So that was, that. like, this, this company is full of people who rock. They've been figuring out how to do all these crazy shots from doing it in the woods with cable cams and drones and, and all of that. So shouts out to them. But I'm blanking now as to what his name was. Yeah. <laughs> I think his name is Brad, but now I don't know his last name. Don't air this part. <laughs> he is a really rad dude, though. I think and you're right. It's Brad. Yeah. I don't remember his last name. Pit. McAfee. Okay. Uh, sh no, that's not it. Okay. <laughs> Lucas. So then the so Brinks truck blew Oh, up. yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I just don't know. I thought we were done with that. I moved on. Uh, yeah, it, it blew up and whatever. The shot went well. Nailed it. Best day ever. Like, went home. Couldn't even go to bed. I'm just sitting in bed, like, buzzing after that whole exciting day. That, that was, like, one of the first awesome things that really got me hooked on that job. Because you film a bunch of, like, Hallmark movies. There's no crazy shots. Like, the craziest shot you'll get is uh, a big walk-up on a long lens. And that's, like, a pretty challenging shot to nail. But that's only because you're kind of being thrown to a wall set up with, like, a oh, we didn't have Steadicam for this shot, so we'll just, like, do it a big walking long, walk and talk shot, and then the whole time you're, like, trying to keep the people in focus from walking, like, 300 feet away up to, like, 10 feet away, which is, like, pretty challenging. Um, Brad McGregor. Brad McGregor, yeah. Shouts out to Brad McGregor. Awesome guy. He helped me bag up the camera, too, because he could see that I was a little nervous. Like, it was rainy out, so you got to throw some weather bag on the camera, but he was kind of like, oh, yeah, let me do this for you. You seem a little stressed with what's going on. Yeah, awesome guy. Uh, I think he worked for Free Ride Entertainment at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of really. Yeah, we met, he was on our set too. Yeah, you guys used like yeah. the Kira arm, or yeah, we that, used the robotic that was precision really cool. arm. That was like an awesome video. I watched that. It was Trek Ab, right? Yeah, yeah. Those guys, fun. they get to do the coolest stuff. Like that's such a sweet job that I can't believe exists, and it's existing in Vancouver, which is where I've you know basically grown up. All of this, like even the film industry, I can't believe that's a thing that exists here. I would have never thought as a kid you could be working in a job like that full time, like, you know, living, living a life. But here we are, except over this last like four months, there's been the strike. 
And it's totally fucking crazy. So slow. What's, can, what's I, the strike? Uh, DGC? No, no, I have no idea. Fighter strike? Strike? I, I don't bowl. I'm not much of a bowler. Yeah, I don't know. I Turkey. usually just get spares. Yeah, yeah or so. just better ball. <laughs> Bumpers mm-hmm. up. Bumpers up, big Dude, balls have ever, up. Have you ever got a turkey? I don't think so. It's I don't pretty think sick. So. I rarely get spares. I mean, I uh, rarely get strikes. Turkeys, three strikes in a row? Mm-hmm. Yeah. On wee bowling, I can crush <laughs> turkeys, dude. Unbelievable. Unbelievable skill. It's all about the twist and the wrist. Strike yeah. every time. It's Are you guys true far edge? It's true in real bowling, too. Are you guys like... A lot harder though. Big ball finger bowlers, oh, yeah. or are you small ball <laughs> Canadian bowlers? No, the small balls suck. Oh, see, that's where I I five I'm pin. good at the. Is that five, five pin? Five pin. Yeah. Five pin. I'm a five pin guy. No, no, no. I haven't done it for so long. Oh, I'm actually going bowling Thursdays. Shut your know. butt. Yeah. You gonna do five? Yes, you go. Huh? I don't think. I think it's probably ten. Why are you going bowling? Uh, it's uh, someone's birthday. Oh, good. Oh. Best birthday place, bowling. Mm-hmm. And a mm-hmm. uh, uh, little quote from the first food bar. Some of the best chefs are kept in uh, bowling alleys. <laughs> what? Why? Was, I don't know. He's just like. Best uh, what, chefs? Yeah. He's like some bowling alleys actually have some of the best chefs around. Like the guys who cook the wings and the <laughs> nachos? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to get a, you want to get your best burger? Find a bowling alley. I don't know if that's true in Vancouver. I think it's it's because um, you get more flavor when you are bowling all day and (laughs) And then you're eating handheld food. I I don't like eating and bowling, man. I can't. It's pretty disgusting. It's all finger foods. And then you stick your fingers in the holes. They shouldn't allow nachos at a bowling alley. Usually I'm like halfway through eating something and then I'm like, oh, right. I've been bowling. Yeah. Oh, God. Try to keep my hands away from my face. You need to get your own ball. Eat my oh, own ball. You get your own ball. Get, Bring your get own my ball. own ball. Yeah, that's our. That's but still. A, I, I, I thought mean, about it. I don't your own sick. bowling gloves. Oh shit! Fingerless for sure. I think all the guys I'm going with on Thursday, they all have their own ball. Kind really? Of thing. Really? Shit. Yeah. Is this so like Manila Gray guys? Yeah, say, they, yeah, they yeah, have yeah. big bowlers. Whose birthday is it? You should buy them a bowling ball. No, that's a personal. Holy oh, shit! It's like buying someone a butt plug. Hopefully they don't watch <laughs> this. Hopefully they don't watch this and realize I didn't get them a bowling ball. Don't. There's no way they yeah, watch you this. Think they're you didn't need one. <laughs> you weren't going to use it enough anyway. Halfway through that Red Bull Rampage clip, they uh, they tuned out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was the uh, squirrel catcher for the hardcore fans. <laughs> yeah, Shouts out to the Chuthers catcher. who stuck around now. Yeah. yeah. Still with us. Yeah. You're still here. Shouts out. Yeah, comment if you're still here. Shout out to you. Comment. Comment. Subscribe Nikki V is life. Yeah. I like turtles. I got, I got a shout out to the Nikki V fans out there. They're a supportive group. <laughs> yeah, they for are, a while, man. Yeah. For a while, I was like, once I left that company, I was just kind of like off put from the internet for a little bit. Just, I realized like things were changing. It wasn't original content that was awesome anymore. It was like tailored content to the audience, younger, more ADD, like just short, hard hitting content. When I left there, I was like, ah, oh, like, I just hate making stuff now. I don't know why. I hate editing now. I hate doing all this stuff. I should just go do something else. And then I still ended up coming back and editing and shooting stuff. But um, the Nikki V fans, they stuck around. They're like messaging me, when are you coming back? And for a while, I was like, oh, leave me alone. Stop it. Like, <laughs> I'm a human outside of this. Like, I just hey. wanted to leave. But um, they're, they're cool. Shouts out to them. <laughs> fuck was that <laughs> sorry i just hit a button that said famous without I just i'm just shooting blind over here i, I don't know what half these sounds are sorry <laughs> I, I heard that you wanted to make a movie i heard through the grapevine there was some uh north shore you had you already had a title yeah yeah and that movie kind of changed a little bit like i just wanted to make a uh, capture what capture mountain biking that was going on in this era because there's yeah. a lot of stuff changing right now yeah and there has been a lot of stuff changing so i wanted to just Tag along, film some niche groups, and then hopefully make a movie out of it. I've been filming some mountain bike stuff, but it hasn't really turned into that movie that I was thinking about. Maybe I will make it though. I don't know. Do you do you know the title? Did you have a title? I you think it was called. It, but I think it was called North Shore Hardcore. Yes, that's what it was. Oh, yeah, North Shore Hardcore. But I, I would didn't, watch that. I didn't Absolutely end up making that. it. Yeah. Well, I, will, I don't know. Still in progress. I just recently watched uh, Carts of Darkness. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm familiar. What's this is, that? It's a good one. It, it's about for some vaping? reason, it's blowing up. It's an old film. I remember it was on like Vimeo it was only. Like Twenty years old. Now it's on YouTube. I just watched it on YouTube. It was mm-hmm. on the airplane when we flew back from Sedona. Wow. Yeah. Like a go karting movie or 
Are we talking no, about shopping carts? It's uh, oh. set in North Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. In West Van. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damn, He's I didn't sort know about of, this. What? Unhoused people, mostly? Street, yeah, yeah. Street yeah. people, and they yeah. race. And they're drunks. Yeah. And they, they, every day they drink a bottle of goof, which uh, I don't know what Swill. that was. What is that that like, they were drinking? I thought it was like. Uh, Swish it, or whatever. Yeah, like not wine, but it was like. Homemade alcohol. Yeah. Wasn't it? I don't, Wait, what'd I you call know, it? Like goof? Or, or, yeah, they, yeah, they like would call port, it goof. Like port. Or goon. Port, yeah, it, I think it had like JP on it or J. It was like yeah. a green bottle, yellow label, something. Chellers let us know. Yeah, yeah please goof. let us know. Alonzo, do the research. Watch the entire movie right now. <clears throat> um, I remember something. There's something from the East Coast that people make, and it's called like Swish or something like that. But basically just like homemade alcohol. So it's like prison Potentially wine. blinding. Like you, that you make in like the... Oh, or was it what a branded thing? J, green JP alcohol? No, no. That's just mouthwash, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they well, could have been drinking mouthwash. Yeah. Anyways, the movie is about a uh, filmmaker who he filmed snowboarding. <laughs> and then he was in a car accident. And then he didn't film for 10 years. And then he met a group of homeless dudes who uh, they recreationally ripped shopping carts, like Safeway shopping carts, down Mountain Highway. Mm-hmm. At like full speed, and they would put like forty pound rocks in the front of their cart, and it would bomb down. They would hook their feet in the hook their feet, their foot actually, just one foot in the side of the cart, and then the other foot is just stopping them. Damn! And they would wear through their shoes, and yeah, Lords it, of Dogtown it, style. It was interesting, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. It wasn't yeah. like it started with the sport of it, but it kind of ended up just being about uh, life. Life, yeah, and, that's cool. You know, and how these people live and what they take for granted and what they don't it's very like scrappily made like you know old 2003 cameras but it's very engaging i love it though it makes you think you know yeah it's absolutely like something for everybody those are really cool because even just being somebody who's been filming biking and stuff like you know going out to like make a bike movie, yeah play that back maybe i never ended up doing it because it's just like the point like what's the point of it am i just going to make another bike shred it thing or is there actually like now that i'm getting mm-hmm. a little older I feel like anytime I'm shooting something, I should have some sort of point. Like, there should have some sort of story or a message or, I don't know, maybe that's just getting older and, like, realizing that, you know, you don't, you don't have to, like, just go be making cool stuff all the time. Like, sometimes if you have the power to make something, you should make something with some sort of purpose so that it's not just, you know, another shred it that gets, like, lost. watched and lost in the, yeah, lost in the pile. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, there's space for both, but good story is nice. Mm-hmm. Play, play Cards of Darkness there. I want to I want to show Nick. Oh God, the monkey got loose. Uh oh. Oh my God. What, what is this? Put, so, yo, Jason, you know, Christian mm-hmm. Beijing uh, was a cinematographer. He he filmed. Oh really? He yeah. Was, yeah, he did Neural Disorder one. Yeah, he filmed oh, Neural nice. Disorder, and he, I think there's there's a few select. Just play it, Alonzo. Don't wait for my cues. Play it. Would we we want the content. Oh yeah, the helmet cam. Me as. I don't know. Yeah, that I think that was Christian. Say, what is screen? Brett oh. Tippy told stories of Christian. Look at that. On our podcast. Yeah. Full VHS handy. All right, all right. That music is copyright. Turn that off. Turn that off, Alonzo. Yeah, we can mute, you can mute it and just watch just mute it. it. Yeah. yeah Look at that foot breaking. Wow, he's using all of the shoe. I'm pretty sure this is uh, shot on film, so it must be one of Christian's shots. That's sweet. Yeah, it switches between film and digital. Yeah. Mini, um, mini DV. Yeah, this guy's ripping, eh? Yeah, this is awesome. This guy was the it's best, I thought. Insane. When I worked at a grocery store, Price Smart Foods, I would be ripping around on the carts a lot in the back, trying to do like spins and just basically not working. Oh, classic spot. Yeah, classic. So it, you, like, did, it like starts as them just collecting bottles, I think, and then they like evolve it to, you know. I've got to watch sport. this for sure. This I like the guy really who lives in the RV just growing flowers like he has some nice little gardens around his rv and it looks like he's parked in up like a grocery store parking lot or something (laughs) and he just upkeeps it and his advice was to because he these guys make like 50 dollars a day on a good day in bottles Mm. and his advice was to people who make way more money than him then you better know what the hell you're spending your money on because you're dying fast we're all dying (laughs) true true Lots of wasted money. I feel like recently I've just realized how much I'm driving around and how much I'm like spending on meals that I could probably save some money on. Uh, it's a but it's, it's one of the greatest food. pleasures in life to eat out. Eat, I know. Eat, what? I know. What? Eat food. Eat out. I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. Excellent. You gotta have the Mountain Dew uh, fund. Yeah. What, Dave, what are you, Mountain what's Dew doing? Money. You getting bored without That's the laptop chimpanzee. there? You're just pressing random buttons on the 
on the. <laughs> oh God, I gotta be more entertaining. <laughs> this this working for us? Just pressing People things around forget. the set. Now, can I read your text that yeah. you sent me? Sure. All right. Well, I when did we first invite you on the podcast? Because I don't even remember. Uh, like last almost year? like last year. Yeah. I guess when you came by to. You were editing yeah, some stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was editing some stuff for you. And you had mentioned, like, oh, we've got a podcast. Would you want to come on? And I was just like, I don't even have anything to talk about. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't know where we my, know, you, my we know job's you got going. All right, well, this is what you said. You said, hey, Matt, I'd love to take you up on a rain check for the podcast someday. I am no longer depressed and unoptimistic. Yeah. When you guys asked me to come on as a guest in the past, I wasn't in a good place. So here's to grabbing life by the titties and making it mine. <laughs> that's that's it. I'd and that's my new mantra. Just, yeah, getting out there. I would say you're grabbing life by the titties, my friend. Thank you. What I kind hope of titties? to be. Your own all shape, all shapes, sizes, okay, genders, genders, uh, sexualities, species, species. yeah, Some yeah, elephant titties, crazy, octopi titties. They don't have them. Bringing it back to octopi. Don't if they don't know that for a fact. Don't even want to get near them if they do. Did you know that it's actually octopuses? Octopuses. Yeah, yeah not pie. What's up, you octopuses? Yeah, um, I just was, yeah, bummed out for a while. I was actually, I had some recent life changes. I was in a relationship for a while that was a. You know, it was great, and then also at some point it wasn't serving me anymore, and I felt like it was um, a very hard decision to make because I didn't really want to make any decision, but also at, I knew just something wasn't right, and I was not doing the things that I love to do in some senses. So I had to really, you know, dive deep into my own head, figure out what I wanted in life. Not like I found. I also found I was like getting so stoned all the time just to like be going through the motions of life and then kind of took a step back and realized like, whoa, like why am I so stoned all the time? What's going on? And I realized, oh, I'm like burying some. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Smoke Smoke weed every day if you want. But also if you smoke weed every day, try and take a little break here and there (laughs) because you might be not feeling all the feelings and thinking all the thoughts that you should have. And so I took a little break from some stuff and not just that, but I, um, Realize like, okay, I got to make some changes in my life. I don't think I'm doing, I don't think I'm heading down the path that I should feel like I should be heading down. So I had to switch it up. And that was really hard. And since I have, that's been a really great thing because I kind of like, I'm finding my motivation to do projects again. I'm feeling passionate about work and that sort of thing again. I feel like I have some sort of, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I feel like I'm going to do something like not a movie maybe, but like something creative. I'm going to come out and nail it eventually one day so stay tuned don't you have a youtube channel as well yeah i do i just have been so like uh i upload something on there like randomly once a year or something what now. is it called just burkle b-e-r-k-e-l look it up it's where the crash was mm-hmm. yeah that, that's okay. where the crash was i've been uploading some mountain bike stuff on there some going through some old footage that i had i just am sleep i am also sleeping on so many like things that i just never edited or brought to life to do a little more of that but I actually really hate editing now. I don't know what it is. I like have this PTSD of like uploading daily videos, editing daily videos. Now, whenever I open my like editing program, I just don't want to be on it. I want to yeah. be like outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Need an assistant editor. <laughs> well, you're always welcome to work here if you want. You just plug in. Is this you need people to hang around. Yeah, Sometimes much better it space. It does. It absolutely does. Like, is that a picture of you from uh, yes. our thing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Copyright. How that was <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, we'll send you the DMCA. Yeah, when uh, when you do the big jump in How to Be Canadian, <sighs> Superman, su- uh, Suicide No Hander. I know. I wish I actually actually re- did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was inspired by Larry the Enticer, I guess. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Which I just realized I didn't know this, but Enticer is like a snowmobile. That I'm pretty sure that's the one he's riding. The Enticer. Oh, yeah. oh. never knew that. But then recently went on a sled trip, and somebody kind of told me that that was a type of snowmobile. Don't know who made it. So it is Larry the sled or is yeah. he a man? It's just, it's like a two part. He's both Larry and enticer as the, one, uh, okay. as one sled. I could be wrong too, but silent and that those old types of snowmobiles are so fun. They have like very limited suspension, but the seats are always really cushy and bouncy. So like a new sled will have just whatever the most crazy, cool, good suspension. And then those old ones are like, they're fun. <laughs> they're a good time. Ticers. Go to videos Indies. there, Alonzo. I, I remember watching a couple of these. I like the way you edit stuff, though. It's very Thanks. crazy and chaotic. <laughs> and uh, uh, 
probably the way that your brain works as well. Yeah. It just, comes across. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. I think that's, uh, I like that little spice on the edit when it's a little wacky, crazy. But yeah, that's mostly just bike stuff now. I don't know. I haven't made any, like, I also found this point where uh, I feel like I'd be editing stuff and then I'd have like actual paid work to be editing. And then I just kind of lose my focus with yeah passion project type stuff as you do. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to come back and do stuff like that. Um, I recently got to go down to Mexico to shoot a project uh, that I just, uh, I had a vacation booked down. Like I booked a flight ages ago to Puerto Vallarta and <clears throat> I had just like gone there recently. So what, when it was coming up, I thought like, there's no way I need to go back down on vacation. I should make something productive out of this trip. So I actually called uh, Israel Carrillo, oh, yeah. Carrillo from uh, Pink Bike Academy season two. And we were uh, going back and forth. He had, he's such a creative guy. And I found that out on the filming of that show when we did the video challenge. He was uh, helping out one of the other guys, Bradley. But he had like the best ideas. Like he was making cable cams out of like fishing line and GoPros. He just had like a really good sense of what makes a good video because he's a storyteller. And while I was filming this, I'm like, holy shit, this guy's awesome. I, like, I need to team up with him on something. I don't know what. And he didn't end up, I don't remember when he was eliminated on the show. First episode. Yeah, unfortunately <laughs> he was eliminated first. Jason remembers very well. Yeah, I remember but it was, breaking that man's heart. Yeah, yeah it, was, oh, it wow. was heartbreaking because, you know, <laughs> yeah. you, got, you get to meet these people, you realize they're like really awesome people. And then, yeah, when the, the life gets pulled out or whatever, the rug gets pulled out the from life. under their feet. The life, yeah. <laughs> the career. Yeah. With money and, yeah. Then it's uh, sad. It's depressing. <laughs> Jesus, what is happening? Sorry, this is a sad moment. <laughs> it so, is. I don't know how to turn this thing off. There's no off button. Why were there air horns? Uh, it's just. It just makes add. it extra sad. Okay. Yeah. It's like a really blown out Jamaican <laughs> dance hall air horn. Deep fried sound file. Yeah, so, um, man, he was awesome. And I had this trip coming up. So I hit him up. We made a plan. He had a really great idea to shoot. So I went down there with my camera stuff. Went to his uh, city, which is Guanajuato capital in the state of Guanajuato in the middle of Mexico in the mountains. Like, I don't know. Most people realize this. Maybe they do. And maybe I was just dumb. But I didn't realize that as you go inland in Mexico, you just like keep going up and up and up and up and up. There's just the mountains in the middle of the country that uh, I'm really exposing my lack of geography. <laughs> but. What a crazy place. I didn't know. Yeah, it was crazy. Like Mexico City, I, I think it's like something like 7,000 feet, or Guanajuato is like 7,000. Like basically, the top of Whistler is the base of the city there. So you're like super high elevation. Um, I got there so, like, I don't know what I did. I ate something just outside the airport, took this 10 hour bus inland, and like <laughs> got food poisoning so, so badly. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I remember seeing the story. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm a, I got a weak stomach, I think. Much. That's I get... the warmest part right here. <laughs> All right, this <laughs> one's Jason now. This is no, Jason. <laughs> what? That wasn't me. Oh, man. Cover all 9,000 face buds. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, definitely, that's, me. that's definitely me. That's definitely me. Let me turn that off. <laughs> that's that guy who's like a scientist tasting flavors. Yeah, that's the ice cream taster. Um, yeah, I was not tasting <laughs> ice cream. I think I ate a shrimp burger. At some place outside the airport. <laughs> you hit all 5,000 taste buds. <laughs> it hit all 5,000. When you were eating, what did it sound like? Um, nom, nom. That was each shrimp going down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a terrible thing, though. And, like, to be, I was like, yeah, I'll take the bus. It's a night bus. I can sleep on the bus. Oh. If I take a flight, I have to get a hotel overnight and then fly out in the morning. Might as well just do this 10-hour night bus. Worst idea ever. I mean, like, at an, on a night bus, you don't even get to see anything, right? It's dark. So there's no, like, seeing the countryside part. I'm just in this bus, like, <gasps> running to the back. Like, there's, thankfully, a really nice bathroom. Holding myself on the wall. It walls. was a very nice bathroom. Yeah. Surprising and how It also had, it was. like, a sub door to the back. Like, you go through those doors, and then there's two bathrooms. So the sound barrier was great because I was mm. just ralphing. <laughs> Splashing. Just also, you're splashing. lucky it's a night bus, so a lot of people are probably sleeping. Yeah. So you don't have that anxiety that like people are trying to use the bathroom. Yeah. No one was trying to use the bathroom. It was like a pretty yeah, pretty That's dead bus. Essential. Terrible though. And then by the time I got to uh, Guanajuato, or actually, it went to uh, this other city, Leon, which is pretty close to Guanajuato. Um, Israel was there at the bus station to pick me up, 
And the first I see them and he's like, you look fucked. <laughs> like you look bad. What's going on? And I'm like, oh yeah, I just think I eat something bad. Like I don't feel that great. Uh, yeah. So then we start, like we go to his truck and we start heading home. He's like, it's insane that you have like all your stuff packed in that one backpack. I'm like, oh my God, I left my bag on the bus. So go back in there, try and ask for my bag. It was like, once you go and land in Mexico, there's a lot less English being spoken. There was a total disconnect. I can't remember what the guy thought I was asking for, but he did not think I was trying to get my bag off of that. Thankfully, Israel could translate. We got the bag, drove back to his place. And like on the drive back to his place, it just kept getting worse. I just kept getting more sick. I couldn't even go like 30 seconds or a minute without like having to get out of the car and go dry heave on the side of the road. And we're in like freaking rural, not rural, but like we're in a different part of Mexico where like I get out and there's fucking dogs like (laughs) running up to like attack me. And I'm just like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh. these dogs are like, oh, this guy is, something's wrong with him. We're not going to even, yeah, even bite him. This guy. Yeah. He's loco. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And it's like, we made it all the way to his friend's, uh, his friend's house who was lending me a bike. Shots out Alvaro. And uh, he's like, okay, we got these bikes. We got like a transition patrol and like a S-Works stump jumper. Both like amazing bikes. Both things that I did not think I was going to get access to in Mexico. and. Uh, He's like, which one do you want? I'm like, I don't care. Like, I just, I was so sick. I just didn't, I didn't even, I wasn't even conscious. And because of the elevation too, I just felt like so drunk, like exhausted and like delirious and whatever. And thankfully he had his, um, a friend there who's a doctor, who's also a mountain biker. Everything was like a hookup through somebody who's also a mountain biker. So shouts out to the mountain bike community. Everyone hooked me up. But he brought me to a doctor. They give me some needles in my ass of like anti-nausea, <laughs> anti-vomiting, but, uh, what are they called? Antibiotics. I like went to bed at this place that I was staying, woke up and then I, fi- I was like alive again. It was amazing. I went <laughs> from such they? a low point to like feeling baseline again, which was so great. And then that just set the tone for the rest of the project because I was so happy to not be sick anymore. I feel like the project was just so good. So awesome. Shot lots of food and stuff. <laughs> I think something's unplugging it. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I don't know. Sorry. Shout, oh, out, shout out to unplugging. Shout out to unplugging. Yeah, unplug yourself once in a while. Get unplugged. But yeah, really fun to go do something out of a whim. And like there was no um, budget or anything for it. It was just out of pocket. And between the two of us, we're producing it. And I think like what we made was very beautiful. And I hope it all makes sense in the edit. But hopefully there's a chance to sell it as well, which will be great. It'll be like a full... Full awesome project because we went in with the intent of let's just make something and if it doesn't make any money whatever at least we like went mountain biking and had a great time. That's so sweet. Stay tuned for that. It'll, Where, it'll be called. That coming? When's it coming? I don't know. Um, in the next, let's just say six months, uh, it'll be called Comida Mexicana, which just translates to Mexican food. It's comparing Mexican food to the riding in Mexico. So I got to do some biking there. I actually had my birthday out there. Um, Israel planned this day where we went on this crazy ride at sunset. Like this, the city there is insane. It's like if, if you've seen those races in uh, Colombia or anything, they're going through the towns, down the streets, down the like stairs everywhere, alleys, crazy stuff. They do that type of racing there. I think there's two races a year, like an urban DH. But we start, you basically start off on the mountains. This train looks like a mix of Kamloops and Arizona. And we're riding down the mountains, awesome single track. There's cactus everywhere. You don't want to go off track. And then it's like really rocky, exposed stuff like Utah. And then all of a sudden you're in the city and you're like going downstairs, you're going down these alleys. You're like, they're launching off stuff. They know how to ride this stuff super well. I'm like being super reactive, not proactive. So they're like pushing downstairs. I'm like launching off and getting bounced and like hopping all over the place, scaring the shit out of myself. But it was an amazing, uh, amazing night to have a birthday. And then we ended up in town and had some drinks and stuff, enjoyed some food and yeah, what a, what a good, good experience. Jason, cool. can you send that video to Alonzo of uh, Nikki V celebrating at the Pink Bike Academy oh party? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Maybe there's a couple videos there. Sorry, you said <sighs> drinks and yeah, birthdays yeah. and it reminded me that the, another legendary video. Yeah. Should, if we can just Should we do uh, this or that while we wait? We could do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right. You need the sound? Song? Well, we will need the song. Sound, song. Do you want me to intro it? Yeah. That was the, the, we got to do the intro. That was We're a gonna, great uh, rap party for Pink Bike Academy Season 2. 
And it was also the reason we couldn't have a rap party for Pink Bike Academy <laughs> season three. A lot of you canceled feeling. it. Yeah, I, I think I was a part of the reason it got canceled. You oh, were definitely a part of that. Well. I do remember riding a, ta- a folding table down the stairs, <sighs> and then re- trying to wait. Ride don't it out spoil so it. Don't spoil. No, it. No, I don't think that's in the video. Uh, I may uh, have that video. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, great times though. What a season. Awesome time. Um. Yeah, you guys need that music right now. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's that time again, folks. Time to play this, this or that. that. The game where you choose between two radically different options, either this or that. Okay. Guess, do you <laughs> understand the rules? Sound man, play that music. Filming or editing? Filming. Pizza or tacos? Tacos. Filming with Windmasters or Brett Tippy? Brett Tippy. Night shoots or day shoots? Night shoots. Tech or flow? Tech. Christmas under the stars or homegrown Christmas? <clears throat> Oh, God damn, which one was which? <laughs> <laughs> Christmas Under the Stars was, was my first one. I butchered that for focus. I'm going to go with Homegrown Christmas. Yeah, okay. Coffee or beer? Coffee. Filming Crankworks or filming a World Cup race? World Cup, less work. A line <laughs> or Dirt Merchant? Oh, probably A line because I can't even do Dirt Merchant anymore. It's too scary. Guacamole or salsa? Does price matter? Guacamole. No. Cost more. <laughs> <laughs> what an odd penis, penis sized nipples or nipple sized penis? Nipple size. No, penis sized nipples. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> silly hats or silly socks? Silly socks. Having no arms or having no legs? Having no arms. Yeah. Pink Bike Academy or Drink Bike Academy? <laughs> Drink Bike Academy. <laughs> Indoor or outdoor shoots? Outdoor. Hot dogs or sandwiches? Hot dogs. Oh, okay. Well, I'll live with it. <laughs> <laughs> shuttle. Hey, what is it? Shuttle or pedal? Oh, shuttle. Blink 182 or Sum 41? Sum 41. Sorry, Blink 182. Whoa. That, Canadian. That, that was a twist. 29 or 27 and a half? 27 and a half. Jumps or drops? Drops. Loam or pow? Oh, God. Don't make me do that. <laughs> Pow. Red they always Bull. go pow. They always go pow. They do always go pow. Yep. Red Bull or Monster? Oh, I mean, for what? Flavor. For sponsorship or flavor? flavor? Red, Red. Red Bull. Huh? Whistler or Sun Peaks? Sun Peaks. Late nights or early mornings? Late nights. And finally, mountain biking or snowboarding? Oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> Snowboarding, less injuries. And that was this or that. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Thank you. That really made me figure out some things. <laughs> when you're under that's a tough what one. Loam or pow? In, with my friends who I ride with, we have been calling pow loam these days, ironically. You've been calling so, loam pow? Yeah, no, like we've been calling pow loam. Oh, pow loam. So like, oh, oh. yeah, we got like we got to go up to this chair. There's going to be so much loam off of the backside. You're, like, you're not going to believe <laughs> Ironically, much, so. ironically using this. Mm-hmm. You all know it's wrong. Yeah, we've also been rapping some songs while we're out there. One of the lyrics from the song was, I got mips on my brain and I got 100 pounds of loam in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ever hear a song that came out with those lyrics, that's that's we started it, okay? <laughs> Smoke weed every day. <laughs> All right, I got a couple of videos. So how, how is it working on also. Pink Bike Academy? Yeah, pull those guys up. Oh, the, yeah, Pink Bike Academy season one and season two were the absolute glory days of any type of mountain bike related film job. I had so much fun. I got to ride my bike so much. We got to make a cool new show. Jason was there. And then we got we got to get wild with an after party with Titan tubes everywhere. This is what uh, are you drinking? Here? Season two. That's a, what, what I'm drinking is a Monster Energy Red Dog, which was uh, the sponsor of season two. I'm sure you would much prefer prefer a Red Bull, as we know your you favorite know what? flavor of the two. With these Red Dogs and even these months, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a sticky mess. People need to go watch the YouTube just for this. Yeah, you have to watch the video. Oh man, what is that called when you smash the, like Stone Cold? Stone Cold Steve yeah. Austin. Yeah, Steve Austin. That- 316 Steve Austin. All right, now talk well, us through what's happening here. This is the what got the. <laughs> <laughs> just continued running down. 
What, uh, what is that? You're riding a. I uh, was riding a folding table down the stairs. A but folding table. We're gonna see it in slow mo. That's but not. It, that's not light. <laughs> yeah, there's the folding table. Dismount. <laughs> run. Ditched it. And I feel like you went home right after that. Yeah. <laughs> like you just ran really? home. Did he know that you were filming? I. Oh, I, I don't, don't know. I don't so. know what was going on. Yeah. At that point. That's, I think we got a little jazzed up. You know, those mixing dogs. those red dogs with the. Uh, Whistler Trail Forks beer, and oh, we were calling yeah. them Trail Dogs. <laughs> 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 Never been more hungover than that. Well, I, I remember not. you walking around with a pitcher of fluid, and yeah. you're like, "You want some Trail Dogs?" <laughs> <laughs> it was nice this red beer. <laughs> red beer. <laughs> yeah, it's oh like God. an amber. It's like an amber ale with uh, that red food coloring that makes people kooky crazy. I remember when um, Boombox was like crewing up for the show, and they were like, "Oh, uh, yeah, do you know?" you know Nick Van Burkle? We're thinking of getting him on. I was like, yes. Nice. Yes. That's <laughs> awesome. I don't care what his role is. Just oh, bring him. Nice. Thank you for that. That was a really great opportunity. Those were really good times. And then like, I feel like as far as the fun, like the first year is obviously the most fun. The second year, it's kind of reeled in a little bit. That was a good sweet spot of probably productivity and fun. And then by the third year, it was a lot more business. But uh, the shots I got on the third year, I was really stoked on. They were really good. I was super happy with that. The first years, I think I was, like, working stuff out more. But, I mean, what a great project to, like, meet super awesome people, meet people that I've ended up still working with and, and like, making videos with. And then just, like, shouts out to the freaking OG camera guys on there. Like, a guy like Aaron Wetley. Aaron. Yeah, A.A. Ron. Or uh, Gabe Langlois. Or, like, Gab, the, the drone pilot. Or Rafa, the other drone pilot. Like, those guys are incredible. That was, like, such a cool experience to work with these pros. People who have been, like, making working on movies like art of flight or like um uh, rad company or like doing the natural selection broadcast like those guys rock so much they're such an inspiration i was really happy to be able to work with them and get like a little sense of like oh shit you can do this for your whole life and make a career out of it that's pretty rad i can do it definitely i can do it <laughs> that's rad mm. and they're also like the coolest guys ever like you know the people who have worked on the biggest, craziest stuff are always like the most humble people. It seems. That's why they keep getting hired? Yeah, maybe. Also, they have nothing left to prove. That's true. Right? So you can kind of just like sit in yourself. Yeah, very true. But all around, great crew. Shouts out to everyone who worked on that. So many shouts out today. Shouts out. We, we need a shouts out counter. You guys are getting deaf with how much I'm shouting out. <laughs> <laughs> you keeping the chothers happy? It's good. Yeah. Oh man, really fun times and like. Getting to ride with um, just people that you've, like, watched on TV, like a guy like Gully or a guy like Chemical or, like, Christina. Like, I don't know. You just are, like, you're able to connect with those people on as biking as the medium. It's pretty cool. I, I was, like, kind of fan fanboying out with Cam being there on the last year because I have this photo of myself and I'm, like, 12 or 11 with, like, a bowl cut with Dylan Tremblay and Chemical at Crankworks. It's like the nerdiest picture of me, but like such a great moment, such a great memory. And then to like now be working with that person that I was like looking up to so much. Did you show him the photo? Pretty full circle. I couldn't find the photo. I wanted to show no. him. But I showed him the video of the flip and he was stoked. He's like, you haven't done a flip since you're a kid? He's like, that's awesome. And also just like, you know, and you, you don't want to like necessarily meet your heroes because then you meet somebody and you're like, oh, they're not as cool as I thought they would be. Chemical, totally as cool as you think you would be. You know? Yeah. Chemical, come on the pod. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I'm sure you guys will get him on here. <laughs> exactly. What the He's, hell, he's a friend of the show. <laughs> friend of the show. <laughs> he's a chother. Chother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool experience. I hope there's more things like that. I'm sure there will be some type of thing like that in the future, but those types of projects rock. It's like full circle when you get to make something for money and also do the shit that you would have done with for no money. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Pretty neat. Nikki V, you feel metaphorically full after our conversation? Are you feeling like you fed off each other? Oh, man. I think I still have some more shout-outs. Can I do some more shout-outs? Absolutely. Please. Okay. I would love for you to. Oh, he's pulling out his phone. Yeah, I, got, I wrote some shout-outs down. I just wanted to make sure that I covered all the bases. Um, you guys were asking me about some of the like goofier, funnier TV things, but I think one of the things that I worked on recently that is like, most impactful, and I think everyone should go check it out, is a movie called Bones of Crows. It's like a CBC movie about the impact of the residential schools. That's a cool one to have like been a part of because I only worked on it for a few weeks or days, but most of the stuff I make is like, there's not really much impact, you know, but this is something that I actually felt like, wow, this, is, this could change, you know, 
the our world. country, our world. Yeah. yeah, so check it out. It's not out yet, I don't believe. It's doing the uh, film festival circuit still. Ooh, ooh, very highly rated on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes. Ooh, yeah, very, I just 92%. think that's a story that most people should understand and know because it's only coming to light recently on mainstream media, but people should know this story. It's a pretty serious thing. So if anything, if any shots are out of focus, people know it was your fault. Yeah, you know, exactly. Directly. No, like, I can, that will be somebody else who worked on it more often than not. Like, are you the, are those bo- uh, crow bones or pigeon bones? Those, like, mo- mostly crow bones. Oh. Mostly crow bones. <laughs> yeah, that, that one's a big one. Um, so check that out when it comes out. Um, I mean, shit, there's a lot of stuff I wrote in here. <laughs> what did you write? Let us just know. a bunch of stuff. You know, just rally it This off. is like the I most was, someone's been prepared for a podcast ever. I'm I impressed. was just worried that I would come on here and like be nervous and blank, but then I, th- there's stuff that's worth talking about. Um, I think I blanked more than you. Okay. Be great. We're blank, all blanking. Blank 182. Blank. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Mostly, mostly summed it up. You know, shouts out to trail building. If you're a mountain biker, <laughs> get involved in trail building. Shout you out know, to give clouds. Back. Dude, you're making a positive impact right now. I love it. Yeah. You know? I, I like it. this. I like if, you're, if you're getting the rewards of something, give back to it. Um, When's the last time you gave back, Nick? Oh, like donating blood? I don't know. A like, lot, lot um, of people give. Um, <laughs> big, huge shout out to the Eric Center. I mean, that place has really brought the level of everyone up in this area it's really given people like somewhere to go escape to and hang out and find a community and it's such a bummer that it's closing down so i I don't know i feel like the last ditch effort has already happened for it to stay alive but huge shout out to those guys um who have made that happen and brought that dream to life because i know as like we were younger going to the air dome was like the premier thing like oh my Mm -hmm. god i get to go to the air dome you're crawling out of this foam you got foam in your eyes (laughs) It take you can get like three jumps in because of just like the amount of people there and whatever. And then now we have something in the Fraser Valley that's like Woodward level training facility. Pretty awesome that that's happened. I hope whatever happens with that, it'll still survive in some sort of way. Maybe it's not going to be the Air X Center anymore, but maybe it will be like I don't know this dope thing that everyone remembers and is inspired by and makes more of. The one in North Van seems cool, but it seems like the ceilings are really low, which Let's is like. See. Major drawback. You didn't listen to episode 20. Oh, how high do you think the ceilings are? I don't know. Somebody was saying they were only like 10, 15 feet. Yeah, they're 15 feet. Okay. But they look, every, when you get in there and you take a guess, it looks like it's like 25 yeah. feet. Okay. Like, Everybody oh, says 25, 30. Mm-hmm. It's pretty surprising. I think you'd have to really boost to be, yeah. Probably a lot of people will be humbled. The people who think that they're going to hit the ceiling. Right. They'll right. get a video taken of them. Oh. Not even close. No one near. Yeah. yeah. And I guess you can always just dig into the ground. Maybe I can just make dig. a, make a <laughs> yeah, basement in there. You know? Like yeah, those jumps that are half half underground, half above ground that yeah. fill up with water that when it rains. Cool. <laughs> yeah. That was all of our jumps in Richmond growing up. Yeah. It was a, a trial and error process making dirt jumps as a kid. Yeah. You guys had some sweet dirt jumps. I remember watching some videos where you all had, like, there's this awesome era with, like, I don't know, skinny jeans, colorful shirts, like, <laughs> white bars and pranks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Deity reigned king at yeah. that time. Yeah. That was a good era. That was a really fun time of mountain biking. And it was also funny that every mountain biker was stealing from the same pool of music. Like, yeah. There would be one edit out with like M83 song or something. And just like no one else had access to any other music. It was like, that's the song I'm using now in my edit. <laughs> yeah. It's it going to look exactly to the music. same. Yeah. It's harder to find music. Yeah. Hey, no Wall Spotify. Nation. Hey, oh, man. That was, <laughs> that was, I feel like that was like the GoPro slash YouTube. Entering the mountain bike scene era, A Wall Nation. Mm-hmm. But pre A Wall Nation, it was like Jedi mind tricks, oh, Zion like swollen I, members. swollen members, yeah, yeah. sweatshop union. army of the pharaohs. Like there was only like a few of these rap groups that were in like every movie, every hilltop like, hoods, hilltop, hilltop hoods. hoods. Yeah, they were like from uh, Australia or something, New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. one of, one of them. The yeah, good era, good era of music. <laughs> but it's funny, everyone who mountain biked at that time had like the same iPod. Is insane. Mountain bike videos. Okay, I'm and, and Nate, He's still hungry. No, no. He, he's, we asked him yeah, if he was full. He, was and he, didn't, full. he didn't, was not willing to answer. He's like, no, let me pull out my phone. Like, I got to feed more. Yeah. He's got more shouts out. More shouts Everybody out. listening Dude. right now is wondering if their shout's coming right now. So I know. get them out. If I don't shut you out, I, I truly meant to, and I'm sorry that I forgot your shout out. Shout out to Miss Shout Out. Um, 
I want to give one shout out to just like trusting your process in life, not getting too worked up about like where you are at what point, whether you're a biker or a filmer or somebody going to school to be an engineer or whatever the hell you want to do. Like, don't get all stressed out thinking that somebody's ahead of you and you're not doing shit and you're depressed. Like, just don't. It's really easy to fall in that mindset, and I've fallen in that mindset of myself. But, like, I don't know. We're all individuals. We're all on our own path. We all learn things at different times, and we all, you know, succeed at different times and crash and burn at different times. So if I can give any advice to any kids or anything, just keep doing what you're doing and, like, don't compare yourself to others. There's no point. It all, like, what is it the... Comparison, comparison is, is the, the thief of joy. Thief of joy. It really is. And I've done that so much and all for what? It's really pointless. And then like when you're happy and you're making things for the right reasons, you're making your best shit. So just focus on that. Don't focus on other stuff. Here's a weird analogy. I was watching some like World War II documentary and it was showing photos of like, you know, these men that were in World War II and you'd be like, oh, that's a real strapping, you know, 20 something year old. And then you see some like weird looking dude that was also a soldier. And then it flashes forward and they're like, 95 and they're like in the war and they're talking and the guy that looked really weird kind of looks like a great 95 year old mm. and the really handsome guy is just like a melted candle and i'm so like true we <laughs> all have our peaks at different it like clarified something for me like people age differently at different yeah. times and you know like your, your best moment might be at a different spot exactly and even just like learning people learn at different paces you don't even know what you want to do at a different time in life so just like let it happen. You might not even figure out what you're interested in until way later. And if you are, yeah, do it. Grab life by those titties. Shout Let out. it rip. <laughs> but consensually. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the topic of titties, shout out to everyone of all sexual orientations. Everyone's valid. You know, wow. don't feel depressed if you're different than someone else. I thought just you were going to shout out titties. Shouts out to titties. Shouts out to people with STDs. Don't let that shit get you down. I'm serious. You have that written down? Yeah, bro. I just want to make sure everyone <laughs> feels say? this because uh, there's a lot to be bummed out about, but also you're not alone, bro. So shouts out to you. Um, shouts out to my mom and my dad and my sisters. Oh. This is now just a shout out zone. <laughs> this is fine. Shouts out to all the camera people out there around the world capturing stuff of your friends or your foes or whatever. Just keep Woo. doing it. <laughs> and uh, shouts out to everyone. That one's on there. <laughs> nice. You got everyone. Yeah. Oh, man. I think that's pretty much it. You did good. If I missed you, I love you. And let's catch up. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. <laughs> got money on my mind, but I don't have any in my pocket. <laughs> Where do we take this thing? Do we uh, well, the thanks end? everyone for listening. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Chothers. We thank love you. you very much. We love you, Nick. Nikki V. Yes, we love thanks, you. Guys. Thank you for coming out. Love you guys. You guys are, I mean, you're welcome to come work here if you need friends and you need to, you know, editing can suck when you're alone. I do want to say, sucks. you're always one of those people that if I see you on like Instagram or something, I'm always like, I fucking love that guy. Oh, thank no, you. I'm I always, appreciate that. You always just put a smile yeah, on my face. The feeling mm -hmm. is mutual. Thank you. Appreciate I appreciate it. that a lot. You guys are all rock. Like, I really enjoy everything you make put out there. Put your best foot forward all the time. Thanks for having me on here. Right, Thanks yeah. for hearing me blabber. Yeah, I'm not going to ask you if you have anything to promote. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks for listening. And, uh, <laughs> please remember to uh, subscribe. Listen, listen to us wherever you want. And, yeah. Uh, leave show us, us some love. Leave us a speak pipe. Yeah, Nikki V, please leave us a speak pipe. I would love that so much. What is this for speak us? Pipe? Uh, it's a voicemail. Okay. For for our podcast, mm -hmm. and you you just bring up a website, speakpipe.com slash feeding off each other. Press and hold a button. Let her rip. Okay. With consent. And you That's don't right. have to hold the button. You have to hold it. You don't have to hold it. I say that every time and, and they I, always correct And I always me. clarify. Because it sounds more complicated that way, doesn't it? Right. You just oh, tap the button. Every other record. Yeah. Record. Don't forget to press it after. Don't go about your day because you have to. And like, press don't it end it prematurely. But... True. Uh, oh, you're, he's pointing at Big Al over there. Premature oh, catulation. Big Al. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? All right. All right, and as always, and as Thank you for listening to Feeding Off Each Other. Please subscribe for more great podcasts.